Ziggy Electronics, Smokey Amps, the greatest music ever created, and how it ruined our lives. With special guests, Testament's Chuck Billy, and recently back in Megadeth, Dave Ellison, and straight from EB's personal video stash, Lars attempts to sing a Metallica song. Hey, hi, I'm Eric Braverman. My friends call me EB. You should probably call me Seshla, the Windwalker. Welcome to another series of the greatest music ever created and how it ruined our lives. Today I'm at Megadeth, again, trying to go and interview Dave Mustaine. I made the mistake of just walking through soundcheck, so he had the security guards and other people throw me out. So I'm going to try to get back in. If I can't get his crazy butt to sit down, I'm going to get Chuck Billy from Testament or Dave Ellison from Megadeth, newly reunited into Megadeth, and I think I'll grab something from my old vault, Lars singing a Metallica song. Get your Pepto-Bismol ready. Let's go. The greatest music ever created and how it ruined our lives. I got an interview in here, oh, no, Dave Mustaine. Not today. No, it's just set up by no. Roadrunner Records. It's supposed to be in there at 4 o'clock. Not today. Check it out, it's like this. Uh, you already screwed up sound check once. All right, Mustaine said, you come back here again. Hey, what are those, Wood Tank Jordans you're wearing? Hey, yeah, they are. Oh. <laughs> you got plenty more where those came from, too. <coughs> Go back and tell your other gorilla friends I'm here waiting for them. Hey, Cornelius, zero called. They don't want you back here for the luncheon. Chuck Billy. Like, I can always count on Testament to be with some kind of awesome other band. Like, you guys go out and do tours on your own, but when you're with another band, it's like an awesome band. There's no bull crap. Like, almost like the perennial best opening band these bands can get. You're with <laughs> Judas Priest, you're with Iron Maiden, you're with Slayer, you're Megadeth doing this thing, they have you come out. But how is that, um, how is that always fall into place? Well, it hasn't in a long time until we got a, a new record, The Formation. Because um, we weren't really turned as hard in, you know, since like right before my illness and then after we weren't really hitting the road as hard as we should and we didn't have a record ready because of all, obviously the record label at the time we weren't happy with and didn't want to give them a record yet. So as time, you yeah, know. Yeah, but you still, you toured with Judas Priest like 20 years ago. Yeah, and I know, but back then, that's 20 years ago. Yeah, but, but they're you know. still, but when they go out and do a tour last year, they call you up. Yeah, but we had a new record out. That's okay. how I was getting to the point. Was that I don't think it's just if it, if it was before that, we might not have been in in their ears or seen in the magazines because we didn't have a record. We got a lot of hype and a lot of press out of that record. I didn't even think any business thing. I thought guaranteed power. Have Chuck Billy and Paul Bostoff slamming stuff behind you. We're pretty low key. We don't get in anybody's way. We come do our deal. You tell us how long to play. We come in. We come out. We do our thing. And I think maybe those veteran bands appreciate coming in and just getting in and getting out, no problems. In that sense, you know, I mean, it works because I think we went with Priest, shoot, a couple places, went to Europe and then went to Mexico and got invited on and on and on just because of the fact that, hey, these guys are easy, let's bring them on. They're a great band, great opener, and we enjoy working with them. Like, how do you feel emotionally about all these different fans? It seems like any fan that has some ethnic, ethnic background to them identifies to you more <laughs> it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean because you're not south american no. you're not you're not you, you know spanish you're what are, what is your ethnic I'm background native american native and american. mexican okay so you are native american uh -huh. and mexican uh -huh. you know you gotta think heavy metal is pretty caucasian uh, oh yeah totally. <laughs> so yeah to have someone that heads up a band like yours but do you ever think about that is, a, is that a, have an impact on you or your um feelings? not really i'm never really like that effect and I am who I am and that's that's I'll always be I guess well you played in Mexico recently didn't you uh Did you on the priest thing but we, oh, I thought you went, were, had something going on there recently but I just wondered if you had a more emotional connection or cultural well it, it's definitely like for example an American tour we get to New Mexico 
the natives come out mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. crazy yeah, crowd and it's off the hook. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. They-